Thank you to the patrons for supporting the channel. Welcome to a video about Gary's Mod. Now, normally I wouldn't cover a game like Gary's Mod because of the non-horror theme, but Gary's Mod is one of my favorite games of all time, and I think it's one of the best games of all time. The game has permeated every part of the internet, and even over 15 years later is still as relevant as ever. It's a great example of how to engage with the community as a developer and keep a game thriving after a very long period of time. So strap in, because from top to bottom, we're going to be talking about Gary's Mod. It says Lua started. And you know there's like fully stretching. connected. There's what what there's character there. model is this? Is that Lady Demetriscu? <laughs> Gary's mod. Originally a mod for Half-Life created by Gary Newman, the first version was released all the way back in 2004. Yeah, this thing is old. Gary Newman originally began work on it as a side project, but it quickly became Gary's main undertaking. As further versions began releasing, the functionality grew. A camera, welding, dupes, and more. Eventually, a website was created, garysmod.org, where people could upload add-ons to the mod. This really began to show the community-centric aspect of the project that would be a through-line for its entire lifespan up to now. In fact, you can still get add-ons from garysmod.org, although the Steam Workshop is a much more convenient way to do it. There was actually some brief controversy between Gmod and another mod called JBmod. Yeah, Gary's mod wasn't entirely original. JBmod was another mod for Half-Life 2 that had very similar ambitions to Gmod with a slightly different twist. There was a lot of emphasis on making machinimas of a sexual nature using the Half-Life 2 assets. I think Gary's Mod's more uh, widespread appeal is probably what did uh, JB Mod in in the end. Development hasn't been made on JB Mod in a long time. And after G Mod's popularity began to eclipse that of JB Mod, instead of trying to play some friendly competition, they hurled baseless accusations at Gary Newman and resorted to name calling. They even got JB Mod banned from the Steam Greenlight page because of the sexual nature using Valve's original characters. I will say though, it's a re implementation of the Fizz Gun, originally a usable item in the Half-Life beta, which was replaced by the gravity gun in the full game, definitely has not been forgotten. The Fizz Gun is the single most important tool in Gary's Mod. Gary's Mod quickly started to get the attention of Valve, the developers of Half-Life. However, their initial pitch of releasing the mod as its own game was rejected. But after some more dealings with Valve, in 2006, Gary's Mod was released as a standalone game on Steam. It only cost $10, although you still needed a game that ran on Valve's Source Engine for it to function properly. Now, I'll assume most of you know what Gary's Mod is, but for those who don't, here's the gist. Gary's Mod is a sandbox game. As the Steam page describes it, Gary's Mod is a physics sandbox. There aren't any predefined aims or goals. We give you the tools and leave you to play. And play people have. We'll get into more detail later, but the game's community has grown and the actual features of the game have grown into countless tools for building, custom maps, and game modes. So, Gary's Mod was originally just a side project for fun, but the community and Gary Newman himself saw the potential pretty quickly. And that is a through line throughout the entirety of this game's development. The simple idea of fun, but the potential being something much bigger. A manifestation of creativity and freedom and fun. Now, I do want to give as much uh, credit to the creator Gary Newman as possible, but we can't have a discussion about how successful Gary's Mod has been without talking about the game and the engine it's built on. Source Engine, Half-Life 2. There are so many reasons that the game and the engine Gary's Mod is built on are important. I mean, so many games built on the Source Engine, from Gold Source to now, started as mods. Team Fortress 2, Counter-Strike, The Stanley Parable. That community-driven creativity is in Valve and the Source Engine's blood. 
I mean, even Gold Source was a mod. Valve created Gold Source for Half-Life 1 by modifying id Software's Quake engine. And the Quake engine has had plenty of mod and community history as well, including games that would eventually make their way to the Source engine and Valve, like Team Fortress Classic. So of course, when you look at what some would consider the ultimate sandbox game, it would be made in Source. But it doesn't just stop there. Again, when you're creating such an expansive and free sandbox game, the actual technical aspects of that game engine are going to be important. Half-Life from the beginning of the series was a groundbreaking game. There are a lot of different reasons for this, but one was the physics. The realistic and responsive physics built into the Source engine really are what moves Gary's mod to the next level. While things aren't perfect, sometimes that's the charm. But in all seriousness, the physics allow you to take a project idea from your head and just work at it. The physics respond in a realistic way, and in the words of Todd Howard, it just works. Most of the time. There's one more aspect of the Source engine that makes it unique and interesting for a game like Gary's Mod. What has been dubbed that creepy feeling by the librarian. Hop into any Gary's Mod map alone. It could be GM Construct or GM Flatgrass or any add-on map. And don't put on music or anything. Just walk around. Listen. Watch. It's undeniably creepy. It reminds me of Liminal Space, shout out to my Liminal Space photography account. It adds an interesting personality to the game, having a creepy vibe to a sandbox game. And a lot of people have attempted to describe why this game feels like this, but I think I have it figured out at least partially. See, most Source games are multiplayer, Counter-Strike, Team Fortress, and yes, Gary's Mod. A huge part we've become accustomed to in this game is opening a multiplayer server, hopping in with some friends or getting on a public match. And most Gary's Mod maps, including the base game maps, are built with this idea in mind, that there's going to be a bunch of people. So they make them wide, open, and, well, ready for up to 32 players. So when you hop into some place clearly meant and designed for a lot of people and it's just quiet and empty, well, that's why liminal spaces feel creepy. Many times they're places people once were or were supposed to be, but just empty. And while this may add an element of uneasiness, it, again, to me, adds to the feeling of freedom. When you're on a map with your friends, you don't even really think about it, but when you're on a map alone, it feels like you've got the whole world to yourself. Like I said, freedom. Look at that. Hold on, wait, let me get in. Are you both <laughs> Lady Dimitrescu? Oh, Whoa, on, wait. What is your name? Come. Alan Walker! Hold on. Land, I want to see- <laughs> <laughs> Here, I want to see, is your character model actually bigger than normal? <laughs> it's your fault. I'm enabling third person. You look like a doll. <laughs> you look like a child. Family photo, everyone line up. Sagan. Oh, they are. <laughs> Sorry. Ow. Hey, stop that. <laughs> Let's see, what other little player models do we have? PS1 Hagrid. <gasps> ah! Who is this? Who is this weird old man? It's Unky Joe. It's Unky it's Joe. Unky Joe? I'm gonna be the police dog, I think. Can you kill me? You can be a dog? Okay, tell me how funny this looks. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm coming in. This crap! Hi, dude. You're walking in every second! Where are I'm you what? guys? Press X and walk slowly. <laughs> ah! Ah! Hey man, uh, why do you walk like that? <laughs> what do what I walk like? You have a gun in your paw. I do. Like it's not like it's floating somewhere. You are holding it with your paw, but it's on the <laughs> ground. 
Speaking of freedom, I want to talk a little bit more about how the game itself, to its very core, is about exploring creativity through freedom. Let me paint a picture for you. You boot up Gary's mod. No add-ons installed, just the base game. You hit Q and open up the spawn list, and what do you want to do? The possibilities are almost endless. From nearly every Half-Life 2 asset to a wide variety of shapes and building materials to dozens of tools for ropes, welding, and manipulation, opening the spawn list feels like opening a box of Legos. In fact, that's to me a huge part of the appeal. Sandbox games in general have a way of unlocking that childlike creativity and giving you the tools to create from your imagination. But Gary's Mod is especially fantastic at this. For instance, you could... Make a killer roller coaster, set up a military combat raid, build a boat or a submarine, or a custom tank, set up a game crashing explosive. And let's say you're not feeling too creative that day. Easy fix, head to the dupe library where people who have made their creations can save and upload them. No, I'm not talking about add-ons, that's a whole other beast. Dupes are specific creations you can publish and download from building in-game. From giant controllable mechs to the obligatory ragdoll sex, JB mods still find a way in here, huh? You'll always find a way to be inspired, or just have your game crash. But in all seriousness, you can use dupes to just save your own personal creations, and if you have the same hard drive, it can be fun to just look back at your early dupes and the projects you've worked on. A real trip down memory lane. Similarly, you can save map states so an entire setup or multi-creation building can be saved for later. I guess here's the point I'm trying to make. When you're young, you have a sort of endless imagination, creativity. You'll make up games with your friends, build random things that come to your mind. And when you boot up Gary's Mod, it instantly unlocks that part of you again. I can't tell you how many random games my friends and I have come up with, all of which end in us just arguing about rules or cheating. We sound like grade schoolers, or how many creative projects I have embarked on alone or with friends. Again, it's like Legos, Connects, or just playing pretend. There's very little between you and your creativity, which is one of the reasons why it has such staying power. I mean, this thing is more than 15 years old and it's still going strong, and still is probably my most consistently played game for the past decade. I don't like it. Um, here's me laughing. Uh, <laughs> I guess that is probably what a dog would look like if it could laugh like a human. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just get a full song? They can catch up, man. Oh my god! Oh my god, it's gonna crash the game! Oh my god, that was so much. Holy shit. <laughs> you guys wanna hunt Lady Dimetrescu down in the forest? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's do a test. What does it take to kill Lady Dimetrescu? Not much, because she no, died no. last time. Oh, it's still Lady. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what are we gonna do with that? Oh. oh! I'm running. Holy oh. shit! Okay, do we wanna play TTT? Yeah, let's do it. Now, I already talked about how the game opens up your creativity in-game, creating your own game modes yourself or building your own creations. But that culture of creativity grew outside of the game itself. This whole time, we haven't even talked about add-ons. I mentioned earlier Garry'sMod.org, but obviously the Steam Workshop is a much more direct way to do this. See, the whole experience of creating planes, weapons, game modes yourself, you start to run into... I won't say limitations, but you begin to wonder how you can more effectively implement these into the game. And that's exactly what people did. The creative energy of the game itself expanded into weapons mods, add-ons, tools, vehicles, entities, and even entire new game modes. We'll expand more on the game modes themselves in a moment, but there's some more to be said about how add-ons affect the base sandbox mode. The possibilities that were available without any add-ons are already enormous, but with the addition of custom assets and tools, it really adds something special. For instance, WireMod. This is one of the older add-ons for the game, but is still one of the most used. It expands the tools for building, manipulation, and control tenfold. It expands the complexity of machines, vehicles, and weapons that you can build. From complex weight, spawning, and scaling tools to actual programming you can do inside Gary's Mod's UI. It's allowed for an expansion of creations that are honestly astonishing and impressive. Adding custom player models, NPCs, and ragdolls allow for more complex AI and new possibilities. 
from the more goofy PNG NPCs that chase you around to more complex and realistic military combat characters to zombies, robots, and of course, Cactus. Anything I mentioned you could do with the NPCs in the base game, you can do better with add-ons. And of course, the weapons. While Half-Life's gunplay is pretty good, sometimes it can get a little boring. So instead, want to fight with swords, harpoons, SMGs, literally a handheld nuke launcher? Well, go ahead. From PvE combat situations to goofing off in PvP, the weapons can range from straight up rips from other games like Overwatch, Call of Duty, or TF2, or fantastically creative originals. Want literally to just vape? Go ahead. And custom maps. While Construct and flat grass are useful for a while, maps expand your ability to build, set up scenes, and utilize environments in different ways. And map makers have found ways to add little extra spice, from easter eggs to entirely new features like built-in elevators or weird creepy secret rooms. Some of the best experiences you can have on Gmod is just exploring random maps, or using them as racetracks, or incorporating them into a building competition or battle. One aspect about maps, and a lot of add-ons in general though, that I couldn't talk about Gmod without bringing up are Counter-Strike Source Assets. Remember how I said Gary's mod needed a source game to function correctly? Well, that expands into add-ons. Almost any Garry's Mod add-on map you can download will need Counter-Strike Source assets. Otherwise, you get some of the most iconic yet infuriating imagery ever. Pink and black missing textures and error models. These also appear if you join a server without having all of the host's mods installed. And oh boy, can that increase the loading times too. There are tons of other types of mods you can get, but the last thing I want to talk about here before we get into the game modes is vehicles. Just wow. What you can pull off in the base game sandbox was pretty cool, but with the add-ons you can use, it's a whole new experience. World War II fighter jets, Boeing 747s, any tank you can think of, bicycles, hoverboards, souped-up convertibles, or junker minivans. Obviously, since an add-on can be made by anybody, the quality varies, but some of these are nice-feeling vehicles. Testing a theory. Testing a theory. Okay, the theory is incorrect. Amazing. Wait, I have a really funny joke. Hold on. Does anyone know where a grenade is or something? I have one. Take it. There we go. Okay, thank you. Hold on. Wait, ready? I have a good joke. <laughs> ready? Yeah. No, no, no. Go in. Don't go in there. Do not go in there. <laughs> I'm very hurt, so please be careful. Go in there. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no! <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> Alan is doing some murder. You said it was you? Some light murder. Yeah, and I didn't say it was okay to kill me, did I? It's true, I'm Grace hasn't done anything wrong yet. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I hit you so many times. I know, I'm at 9 health. Why are you so almost dead? Did you just kill he someone? He shot me in the head. With oh, why? <laughs> a gun. He just said, look how much damage this could do. It killed me. Ah, oh, ah, sorry, ah, I ah. just scared me. You're the one who just told us to watch it. <laughs> I'm with nobody. I see nobody. I'm with nobody. I see nobody. <laughs> I, I love- I see nobody. Well, Press F3. now what? Hey, how did you do that, Luca? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh no! I just tried to press the ninth chat command and I killed myself. Stop! Nobody come in. I could do it. I could- I could take- Wait, <laughs> 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 It's Luca. Stop it! Stop! <laughs> Don't go in there! Is there a big explosive there, Luca? No, there's not. I hear a beep beep. That's my watch. Stop it! Stop! Stop it! I got it. Stop. Piece of. You're you're out of ammo. Stop it! Stop it! You're being so lame. You're being so lame. You're being so lame. Let me live. Let me live. I will live. I'm a hoster. Ah! What's wrong with you? Oh, oh my no. God! You're right. Oh my god, I am at one health! <laughs> so far, the add-ons I've talked about are just for sandbox modes, things you can get in and play with yourself. 
but people have taken these ideas from sandbox, uh, games they've made up themselves to play with friends or ideas they've just had, and used Gary's Mod to create their own experiences. Probably one of the biggest features of Gary's Mod's add-on integration is the game modes. And with the ability to define your own in-game rules, restrictions, and features, Gary's Mod became more than a game, it became a platform. A place where you can take the base of something and build your own experiences with it, much like Gary Newman did with Half-Life to create Gary's Mod in the first place. Horror maps, military shooters, multiplayer zombie survival, and then some of the most famous, Prop Hunt, where one team can disguise themselves as any inanimate object, and the other team has to figure out what they are. Trouble in Terrorist Town, a game where a group of terrorists have some traitors in their midst, but only the traitors know who each other are. Murder, a game where one murderer has to find a way to secretly kill all the other players without being discovered, and a detective must figure out who it is and take them out. And Jailbreak, a weird mix of role-playing and strategy where wardens have to keep track of unruly prisoners. One other thing I want to mention, to make another connection to the childhood energy in the game, think about the most popular game modes. They're all pretty much direct translations of party games or childhood games. Murder at the party, hide and seek, things like that. The game really brings that out in people. The passion behind some of these game mode projects is really apparent, and honestly, the polish goes with it. The community dedicated to building on what Gary Newman already created is always expanding, and you'll never really run out of things to do. And I also find the dedication to role-playing aspects in some of these game modes uh, really, again, points to this whole feeling of Gary's Mod bringing out the sort of playing pretend, that childlike imagination. The roleplay side of things in Gary's Mod was never really my thing, but there is a clear audience for it. From Dark RP, Hogwarts Prison, Military RP, it gets wild. And while they aren't something I'd ever want to do, people put hours and days of time into these. We're talking second life level here for some people. And while trolling videos are definitely funny, there's something to be said, again, about the sort of escape that the game brings people. Like I said, playing pretend. And some people take this shit seriously. Citizens aren't supposed to have guns. Uh, admins aren't supposed to suck dicks. <laughs> Add-ons are the things that have kept the game alive and thriving. While you could definitely have years of fun playing the base game, the add-ons, whether in sandbox or in other game modes, is what kept the community going and what has made the game age so well. It supports the use of add-ons so much that they've become an integral part of the ecosystem and the gameplay itself. It's right there on the main menu. And specifically relating to game modes, like I said, the game became a platform. While opening up Gmod Sandbox feels like opening up a box of Legos, Gary's Mod itself is like a toolbox. It gives you the tools you need to create your own visions, your own experiences, and your own games. The $10 investment really gives you like a million games in one. Gary's Mod is whatever you want it to be. All right, I've rambled long enough about what Gary's Mod really is. By now, I'm sure you've guessed I have some history for it and quite an affinity for it. Truth be told, I was a little late to the game, not buying it until December of 2013. I would have just turned 12 and it was the first thing I ever bought on Steam. And probably the most worth it being in my top three most played games. While I do have other games that I've played for longer, Gmod is the most consistently played game that I have. And so I have a lot of memories tied to it. I remember getting really into prop hunt with my friends and then being told I wasn't allowed to play it anymore because my parents saw me beating a bloody baby with a crowbar. I remember watching Sea Nanners and Venturian Tail play for hours on end, building giant spaceships with my friends or having the most insane base building battles imaginable, literally lasting full days, or creating complete abominations with the bone editor tool. <laughs> Just as a little look back, I have a little slideshow presentation of some screenshots that my friends and I have gotten over the years. You can skip this if you want, but there is some amazing stuff in here.
And there was a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to capture in screenshots. The time we strapped a manatee to a rocket and flew it around uh, an island. A lot of these are kind of strange, but I think it just goes to show the memory-making power of Gary's Mod. It's really fantastic, and I haven't even mentioned movie nights yet, where we get together and use an add-on to just watch YouTube. Ooh, can you prop push me? What character are you? Why am I not seeing any of these player models? You're not are seeing- Are you- Are you- No, I see you, I just- are you? I think I know who you are, though. I think I can. Yeah, Shane Dawson. <laughs> yeah, I'm Shane Dawson. <laughs> no, 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 no. I won't do anything. <laughs> I had to just be sure. Sagan, I'm coming for your blood, and no, I no, hope no, you're no. ready for what <laughs> no, I can no, no, dish no, no. out. This is how he should have fought Rumpelstiltskin, and how Shrek should have fought him. Oh, I have to do a wand, a very oh, long. Ah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you crashed me! Why would you do that? Where are we going? Uh, <laughs> is this? <laughs> oh, this is radio edit. Venturia Tale, guys. Are you ready for this? I don't know Venturia Tale. Oh yeah! Okay, I've seen this before. Boom, no, boom, boom. Greetings, fellow adventurers. There is no doubt in my mind that one of the biggest reasons for Gary's Mod's worldwide success is the YouTube scene. From Let's Plays to Machinima to actual animation to programming tutorials, any avenue of content you can think of, Gary's Mod has touched on it. Funny gaming compilation videos? Yep. Horror game Let's Plays? You betcha. Tutorials, drama, web series? Because Gary's Mod can be anything, the content reflected that and well, Gary's Mod on YouTube can be anything. Some of the biggest creators on the platform had Gary's Mod eras, from Markiplier's horror map let's plays and prop hunt videos to Vanoss Gaming to even more recent ARG projects. The growth of popularity for Gary's Mod really hit its peak in 2012 with a surge in YouTube content and let's plays. I'm not sure if it'll ever hit that point again. If you were on YouTube at that time, you definitely have seen the game. Video content is such an integral part of Gary's Mod's history. There's memes and concepts and ideas that have even escaped the Gary's Mod sphere. Why do you think I'm playing Kevin MacLeod's Monkey Spinning Monkeys? And looking away from the YouTube side of the community really quickly, we go back to that creepy feeling. There is honestly a strange fixation in the community with rumors and hauntings. Rumors abound about haunted maps that have a ghost in them, players being followed by strange figures in single player worlds, or a mysterious G-Man virus that ruins your game. It's not hard to understand why. Like I said, there's a certain eeriness to the feeling of a single player source map, and especially with the, um, GM construct, Dark Room. But honestly, aside from the memes and jokes, the content surrounding Gary's Mod, like most things with this game, is a little bit deeper than that. Now, I don't want to sound too pretentious, if that's even possible at this point, but I feel like Gary's Mod is an art form. I don't mean every time you get into a prop hunt game you're creating art, but there have been legitimate pieces of art created in Gary's Mod. It can be used as an art form. If you want an example of this, look no further than the work of the late great Kitty0706. Team Fabulous 2 is one of the most iconic YouTube videos out there, especially within the Team Fortress and Gary's Mod community. A 17 minute action comedy short film made entirely in Gary's Mod. It's damn impressive and iconic. For more recent examples, look at Daylax Heavy is Dead. No, this was not made in Source Filmmaker, Valve's animation software. It was made in Gary's Mod, a viral hit around the internet, but still very much tied to the jokes and the community surrounding TF2 and Gmod and a damn impressive work of animation, seriously. And outside of the bigger video hits, the built-in and add-on resources for posing, animation, and screenshots means there are some legitimately stunning works of art created in Gary's Mod alone. These are insanely well-made and done entirely in Gary's Mod. Like I said, Gary's Mod really is an artistic medium in and of itself. I literally used Gary's Mod for part of a film project a few semesters ago. Tell me about that. Those shots were literally using a Gary's Mod map, some friends, Counter-Strike assets, and an SCP-096 NPC mod. In fact, they were actually left over from another project my friends and I worked on for fun. We used to make these found footage horror shorts using Gary's Mod, and I'm honestly pretty proud of a lot of them. 
And more recently, people have been getting meta and using the Garry's Mod content of the past to make these really unique ARGs. Again, for all things with Garry's Mod, everything is taken to the next level of creativity and expression. So, let's look where we are now, Garry's Mod in the present. The community is still thriving, uh, as always, but I don't know if we're ever going to get back to that peak of 2012-2013. Content is still getting out there like Heavy is Dead and... Uh, Let's Plays and Funny Moments videos from Gary's Mod are still out there. A lot of people I hadn't thought about in years are still going strong like Venturian Tale. The community is still very present. In fact, there seems to be a whole new generation of memes and jokes surrounding just this era of Gmod, including my all-time favorite, Gmod in real life. I just love these images. Playing the game itself in 2021, honestly, still holds up completely. The graphics are a little dated, but I think we've become accustomed to more simple graphics as long as the gameplay is still good. And honestly, Source games still hold up all these years later in looks. And the future of Gary's Mod still looks bright. While add-ons in the community continue to thrive and the bug fixes and updates continue, Gary Newman has been working on stuff behind the scenes, a Gary's Mod 2. Originally, the game was going to be made in Unreal Engine, although the feel of the Source engine was something he was eager to replicate. However, that wouldn't be necessary. When Source 2 came out, along with Half-Life Alex, Valve gave Gary Newman access to the new engine to create the Gmod successor, Sandbox. Is it spelled dumb? Yeah. And do the characters in these previews look like the guys from Mr. Meaty? Yes, but I trust the vision of Gary Newman in a Sandbox game, and if it's anything close to the original, it will be a fantastic game. It seems like VR incorporation and even more expansiveness to the add-on system will be large priorities, and we can already see what some early access modders have been able to do with Sandbox, so I have high hopes. Gary's Mod is an important game, and not just to me, but to the whole gaming landscape, the internet, and YouTube. It allows for creativity and endless community interaction, and it's a great example for how a developer can create a game that will last a long time. And I won't deny, a large part of the reason I love this game so much is because of my own personal memories with it. Playing with friends or working on creative projects, there was a large portion of my childhood that was just Gary's Mod. And as we look forward to what Gary's Mod may bring, it's important to look back and understand why it was popular in the first place. Gary's Mod is playing with your friends. It's building a Lego set or just putting your own pieces together. It's developing your own game, your own piece of artwork. It's creativity, it's community. Gary's Mod is... freedom. Can we not watch all of the creepypasta TikTok compilation video, please? Yes. <laughs>